Our next speaker is my colleague, uh, Matt Larson, and John mentioned already the uh, rest wall. And so just, uh, well, I'm sure he'll explain what the rest wall is, but the idea is basically you might say, well, I'm using the HDF5 library. I hear about this great HSDS service, which presumably is HDF and another implementation. How do I access this from the HDF5 library? And the rest wall is in a way an answer to that question, but Matthew, will you tell more about it? All right, afternoon. Like Garrett said, I'm Matt Larson. I'm on the HDF group for uh, just a bit over six months as of right now. And today I'm here to be reintroducing the rest wall. So if you're not as familiar with the internals of the HDF5 library and how that works, first I'll explain a little bit about the vault layer. So VOL stands for virtual object layer. It's essentially an internal layer of the HDF5 library, which sits under the external API and changes how internal operations like storage are done. And so what you can do is use different VOL connectors to change how internal operations work without actually changing anything about the external API that your applications use. And so there are, I think maybe a dozen or so different supported vault connectors, which do things like support asynchronous operations, uh, route your operations to Intel's Deo system, or change uh, one that uh, routes to S3 buckets, many different things, all of which you can just plug more or less directly into your applications. So this layer serves to add a lot of flexibility to the library. And in particular, the RESTful connector, or just RESTful, takes those external, applica uh, external API functions and turns them into REST requests, which get sent to some external server that implements the HDF5 REST API, usually HSDS, but if you wanted to, you could go write your own server, which implements it as well. So this RESTful implements most of the core, core library's functionality. So whatever operations that you want to do with data sets, groups, attributes, iterations, filters, fill values, odds are that the RESTful and HSDS support that. For a bit of a history lesson, the RESTful first came out in around 2017 when the vol layer was first introduced in HDF 112. And it was updated regularly until about mid 2020 when like a lot of other things, it sort of fell off. And so it did languish for a bit, not getting updated as the library advanced. And it was for a bit, it was unusable with 114, but now I'm happy to announce it's back up with the times now being updated receiving bug fixes, uh, new features, implementations. And so if you find a bug in RESTful, you can probably blame me because I'm in charge of its development now. So to just give an example of how the RESTful works in particular with one function, say you want to create a file in your application. If you're using the native vol or just the sort of default operations library, then that external function your application uses, h5f create, it's going to check the property list you provide that operation to see which vault to use. If it's the native vault, then that operation gets routed to the sort of internal low level function h5f underscore underscore create, which then goes through the actual process of creating a, a local file and doing all the byte work there. Now, if your property list says to use the rest vault, then the rest vault style creation function is invoked which uh, that's RV file create. And what that actually does is it assembles a put request based on your parameters, then sends that off to the external server, waits to receive back a 200 request, and then only then does that top level function return saying that the file creation went okay. And so it's sort of mimicking the same HDF5 API, but with a different storage implementation on the low level or the back end. And when I initially wrote this, I didn't realize I'd be coming right after John. And so I thought I would need to sort of do a primer on HSDS. But thankfully, he did that for me, so I can skip over most of this. Uh, all I want to point out in particular is HSDS's data node system. You'll notice here in green that it has multiple data nodes, which is important for a special feature of the RESTful, because those data nodes can access different objects in the object store in parallel. And because they break up one HSDS data set into many different objects, one for each of its chunks, that can come in very handy with certain operations later on. So the rest of all two HSDS is one option you have for working with HDF5 files in the cloud. But I want to zoom out a little bit and look at some other options you have for the same task, just to see 
how these different options compare and which one might work best for you. The sort of standard option for a while with HSDS was the H5PyDE Python module. And so then you start off with your Python application, use this module, go to HSDS in the back end, and then whichever cloud storage HSDS was configured to use. The RESTful is a fairly similar workflow, still ending up at HSDS, but starting this time from a C application and proceeding through the library and its vol layer. Another option is the read-only S3 VFD, or just the ROS3 VFD. Uh, if you're not familiar, the VFD layer is another internal feature of the library. It stands for Virtual File Driver. And for our purposes, you can mostly consider it similar to the vol layer in that it can change how internal storage operations are handled. And so the ROS3 VFD, similar to the RESTful, routes the same external API functions to cloud operations, in its case, reading from an S3 bucket. So the ROS3 VFD is read-only, as name implies, which limits its functionality somewhat. But because it's a VFD, you can actually enable it at the build time of, of the HDF5 library without having to go and install anything else. And so if you just want to quickly read some cloud files that you know are in a bucket somewhere, that's one use case ROS3 can be good for. Here's a little comparison of different features of each. So ROS3 is limited. And like I said, it can only read H5PyD to HSDS, can both read and write, as well as take advantage of all HSDS's nice features like caching, some parallelism. But it doesn't have an implementation for the library's multi-read and write functions. So these functions were newly added in HDF5 114, H5D read multi and H5D write multi. These API calls give the underlying IO application or implementation a chance to do some optimizations by letting it know ahead of time how many reads and writes it's going to do, to which data sets, and which selections. And what the rest of all can do to take advantage of HSDS's uh, parallelism capabilities is to actually bunch up all these requests, send them out all at once with curl, and then wait for all of them to return. This takes advantage of what HSDS can do and avoids a situation where you have 10 requests to make and so you assemble one, send it out, wait for it to come back, do your processing, and then send to the next one. And so this is a much more intelligent way to do reads and writes to multiple data sets. And the actual impact of this is pretty substantial. The benchmark here is a different one than the one John mentioned last time, although it's with a similar data set. This benchmark was based on working with some ISAT2 data. But instead of just being a series of reads, this was actually a series of, I think, in total, some several gigabytes of data. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but it was a pretty involved access pattern based on doing some reads, some writes different data sets, based on some pretty involved ranges. And so these are a pretty good representation of how actual you know, user access patterns are going to look. You can see that the ROS3 VFD, even only doing the read operations, was a bit slower than the rest of the pack. And so if you're concerned with speed for large operations, ROS3 might not serve you too well. The RESTful is faster than that, at about a minute. Uh, comparable, but still a bit slower than just doing it through Python's H5 PyD. However, changing the application to use those multifunctions, which only involves doing your same reads and writes, but you know, sort of bunching them up ahead of time, let it be much faster, about 100% improvement from 60 seconds down to just over 30. And so with this new feature, the RESTful is one of the fastest ways to access multiple data sets for reading or writing on the cloud. So to close off, I'll just give a brief primer on how to actually start using the RESTful or indeed any similar role in your own applications. Uh, the process, I can't fully explain it here just because of time. So I will say, if you're interested, please go look up in the vol REST repo. The user gu user's guide, specifically sections 221 and 222 for sort of the full treatment I'm, I'm briefly going to skip over here. Uh, first, to use it, you will need HSDS setup, and HSDS has its own uh, well-written guide you can check out. One thing I'll just say is that you don't need to necessarily do it through cloud storage. HSDS supports just using your file system as a backend, and so if you want to just do a quick test, that's a good way to do that.
As far as the actual vol goes, because they sit under the API to use it, you don't need to change, you know, 99.99% of your application. And that 1% you do change just depends on how you start using it. With the vol, you can either dynamically load it or manually link it in. If you dynamically load it, then by default, all the operations that you normally do, like HFF create, data set rights, and so on, are automatically going to go to the RESTful and then get sent to that external server. If you do end up wanting to do some file system operations while it's dynamically loaded, you can just do that by changing the property list to manually use the native vol. And the process to dynamically load the RESTful is pretty simple. You just need to change a couple of environment variables on whatever system you're using to point to the RESTful installation location and then just specify the RESTful as the vol connector. Manually, manually linking the RESTful works sort of like the inverse of that, where by default, all of that operations work like normal, and then you can manually modify the property list in order to send operations to HSDS or to whatever external server external server server you can figure. Uh, how to set that up is, again, pretty simple. You just need to include the RESTful's headers, link against the RESTful when you're building your application, and then use an initialization and termination function at the start and end of your application. All right, thanks for listening. If anyone has any comments or questions, I'd be happy to hear them. Yeah. Uh, need to pass the microphone. Is this a second microphone? All right. Hello, hello. All right. If you use the rest of the Python as well, do you actually have a type? Uh, good question. We actually just recently started testing that. And yes, it is possible, although there were some issues with setting up testing. So we can't for sure say how much of the functionality is preserved. But in principle, yes, very much possible. I mean, I'll present a lot tomorrow that we use both C and Python, and we use Python, but everything works transparently. So I'm not surprised that we ran into the issues. I don't see why that would work because ultimately you will still eventually end up down in HDFI where the ball will take over, even when you started out that Python. Is that right? We expect most of the functionality would work. We just couldn't verify it because. HSDS has some path dependencies for how files had to be created. And setting that up with uh, H5Pi's own tests was uh, non trivial. And so that hasn't been fully worked out yet. But yeah, it's expected. Yeah. If, there are, if there's something specific to that, but, 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 yeah. good question. Thanks. And we have another question for Neil. That was basically my question. Yeah, I, I basically have the same question. Also, I was going to mention Fortran and Java as well as my job is potentially use involved. Oh, yeah. I think that those wrappers to the library would, again, work just fine because everything that the vault does sits under the hood. The only issue is that. Uh, because it has H or if you use HSDS as the back end, I should say, HSDS has a couple of requirements for how file paths are set up, but you can handle that in your application itself. Okay. Great. Uh, you mentioned a few environment variables class slide, and I know for a plugin path, there's an API to that. You also do some of the functionality, so there's also an API change of all connector. Uh, you're asking if there's a way to change what vault connector the library uses independent of environment variables? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, sure. Yeah, so this is a vault connector. So sometimes using the environment will be problematic. So I want to make sure this is Yes, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, that's the sort of manually linking uh, alternative option for using it, which just involves how you like just involves linking it, changing the property lists, and then using the 
functions when the application. So there's no environment variables involved in manually linking it. But for something like REST, it's all it's already convenient to have an asynchronous interface. So is there already in place or is there planned additions of asynchronous interface at the, uh, the library level if you take advantage of the REST all asynchronous operation? Uh, the Rust tool already does take advantage of asynchronous operations to implement the read and write multifunctions I mentioned. So under the hood, it does, in those cases, use curl's uh, asynchronous operations, like you mentioned. As far as exposing that to the user, I don't think there are plans for that, although there is another vol focused purely on asynchronous operations, but that's, that doesn't uh, work with the cloud. No, but these layers uh async ball on top of the rest ball and you're good. Yeah. Think that would work. One more question is also why don't uh why don't the pins the size uh might be uh a scenario where you probably the um probably use the uh rest ball along with the uh the uh, so in this case, how would be able to manage my late states of different objects in different environments? Uh, I'm not sure I entirely understand the question. You're asking about if you access the RESTful through H5PyD, how would you handle objects? Yeah, so, uh, I remember that uh, you probably you have to go uh, backwards to the earlier page. So where you have like top level of the H, yeah, this one. So you have the, the H5 period and then like uh, down the line you have two different APIs like the API flow and that's all. However, like for the external API or on the external API, how do you to manage the namespace of different uh, uh, different you know, generated by different uh, uh, If you're talking about the namespace of things like created groups and created files, then assuming that you have HSDS, use your local file system to store the files, then a file you create through H5F create and a file you create through uh, the RESTful's API would sort of sit in the same location and have to worry about the same sort of name conflicts that they would regularly have to worry about. Uh, if that's not what you meant, uh, go ahead and ask me after the talk. Yeah, I'll yeah. be happy to answer it in more detail. Do you have the support file access property as well, and the library based on that knows which app. So uh, they can both files can have the same namespace in terms of this implementation or something like that. But the library knows exactly which one to go Anyway, thanks, man. Yeah, we can talk after the presentation. Thank you, though. All right. All right. Uh, thanks. Great presentation. Thank you. And you've got plenty of questions, I think.